Good morning. Good morning, bonjour. Salamat pagi. This is our external brain. Right? It's our second brain. And for some of our kids, it's the first brain. Right? Now this is going to move here, and then it's going to move here, and then if Elon Musk has his way, it's going to move here. Right? This machine will be a million times as powerful as it is today in 10 years. And the battery will last six weeks. Right? And we'll have 9 billion people on the internet in 2030. The numbers are staggering, so I'm going to talk to you about what technology means today, where things are going, and I always like to say technology is going to change more in the next 20 years than the previous 300 years. I know it sounds crazy, you know, Industrial Revolution, World War II, the atomic bomb, right? but now technology is changing us. Genomic engineering, changing the weather, right? Artificial intelligence, thinking machines, that's quite different than a steam engine you know, or, or the railway. So we're moving into a world where this is the new normal. Humans talking to machines, machines overlapping in our tasks, machines telling us what to do, machines running our elections. Just kidding, now that was a different time. But the question is, how far do we want to go with this? I mean, if you can be superhuman, would you not want to be superhuman? I mean, I'm German, but I spent 17 years in the US. And the answer is pretty clear for a lot of people. Yeah, if I can be like becoming like God, so to speak, yeah, if I can be superhuman, why not? <laughs> and guess what? It will make a lot of money to be superhuman. I mean, it's clear you're going to be, have an advantage. So who decides what is the right thing to do? We're living in a world of algorithms an algorithmic society, that's money is going digital, right? The algorithmic society. We're living in a world where machines can do some of the thinking, where the data economy is king, right? Some people call that the surveillance economy. And imagine when money goes digital, we're going to have even more of this. And then there's the things that on the other side, I call them the Andro rhythms in my book. The human things. When we talk about intelligence with humans, we're not talking about processing power. Right? We're talking about emotional intelligence, social intelligence. Did you know that the research has shown that emotional intelligence is mostly embodied by women right? today right? in a much larger way than men? I think Jack Ma said, you know, that's our future is to get the EQ. Right? And psychologists have said that humans have about 10 different kinds of intelligence. And what kind of intelligence does a machine have? We'll talk about that later in our discussion. A machine has a binary intelligence, yeah? zeros and ones. Data, figures, logic. This is our intelligence. I don't want a machine that does this. And why do we need it? We are very good at this. Compassion, emotions, creativity. Machines are not. So here's the thing, of course, you know that Basically, replacing humanity makes a lot of money. Look at the uh, profits of big tech. The most powerful companies in the world today are not banks or oil companies. Right? They're tech companies. And they're also the most unre unregulated. Right? Incidentally, so very powerful what's happening here. I mean, the stats are really quite clear. We have algorithms, technology, and then we have algorithms, purpose, curiosity, passion, imagination. That's what, what defines us. And what is the overlap? Will we still have passion or purpose when things are run by a machine? I always say, you know, relationships aren't downloads, and happiness is not on a screen. I mean, it's funny these days, people have more relationships with their screens than they have with people. I mean, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about here. So I like to, you know, as a summary say, and for this part of my presentation, I think societies are driven by that tech and their science, but defined by humanity. Imagine a society that is driven by technology but has no humanity in the sense of ethics, values, ideas, what we want, right? That would be extremely scary. So that's something we have to think about, which way we're we going, and many people are arguing that humans are essentially technology. We can take a vote on this later, <laughs> but you know, being German, I don't believe that. I live in Switzerland now, same difference. 
But in the US, I keep hearing this argument, organisms are algorithms. We are fancy computers. So in that case, convergence of the two doesn't really touch us. A lot of people say that this is basically what's going to happen because you know, computers will take over our work, they will take over our government, they'll run our climate change efforts, and we become useless. I don't know how you feel about this. I don't think humans are going to be useless. If we're looking at this chart, you can clearly see what's happening with jobs and AI. Yes, many jobs will go away because of technology. Many other jobs will be boosted. For example, all the jobs in healthcare, in scientific, and communications. And what are those jobs? Right? Ask yourself what those jobs are. They're human-only jobs. Right? They're jobs that we do because we're human. Look at the, when I zoom in, you can clearly see these jobs are not entirely just logic. Right? They're about us as people. So important to consider what's happening here, the percentage of human-only work. That's where all of us are going. Human-only work means we give the work that can be done by machines, which is increasingly more. We give that to the robots and the software, and we move up the food chain. That will not be an easy transformation for a taxi driver or a call center leader. Again, as Jack Ma has said, is the balance between EQ and IQ. If you want to have a job in the future, you got to boost your, your EQ, right? your emotional quotient. Assuming that you already have an IQ, that's why you're here. Right? But you know, this is something that is quite clear that's going to happen. Oh, you know, our kids, we think about our kids. What do they really have to learn in the future? They have to be entrepreneurs. They have to invent. They have to understand people. They have to know how to have feelings. They have to beat the machines, not by being faster than a machine. That's ridiculous, right? In 10 years, we can't beat the machines for anything. Technology is coming. We're not going to go back on it and put it back in the box. This is the most important part when we talk about technology and humanity. It's not to reject technology. I mean, the idea of saying that we, we, we have a risk, so we're not going to do this, is, is odd, right? But then so is the idea of saying, well, anything we can do, we should do. So let's all put holes into our skull and connect to the internet. Yeah? That's also a bad idea. So it's about the balance and you know, who decides the balance. That will be the biggest challenge. Automation. I mean, the financial industry, you know that many of our jobs are going to be automated because machines are learning them. Right? Christine Lagarde said, automation is good for growth, but bad for equality. And that's a fact. When we're going to have increasingly automation, call centers, bookkeepers, accounting, auditing, you know, half of KPMG, automated, maybe. So that's a question, right? What did we do about this? And, and who is going to be in charge of equality? So in this world, you know, there's also the side effect of what technology does, which is to make us you know, dependent on it. Right? I think when you think of this image, what do you think of? Right? What do you think of social media? <laughs> we're, we're in this world where we're being pulled by strings and we don't even know they exist. Right? To which I like to say too much of a good thing can be a very bad thing, like drugs. Do we not allow alcohol because people may drink too much? Yeah, we, we have restrictions, right? But we allow it. We have coffee, we have cigarettes, we have pipes, you know, whatever you can think of. You know, we're even legalizing marijuana now. And now, too much of a good thing is a very bad thing because when you do too much, you know, end up in a bad place. So let, let me talk about this really important thing when it's about technology. We're, in a, we're living in a world where technology is giving us amazing deals on convenience, on content, on communication. Life is better because of technology. And these companies here are the ones furnishing it to a large degree, right? the top eight in the world, American and Chinese. But on the other end of the fantastic magic offering, we do have some issues. Right? I call these the externalities. Right? These externalities are, are as important as the externalities of oil and gas which is climate change. Now we have tax avoidance, we have dehumanization, manipulation. We have to address the externalities of technology. And how do we do that? Well, here's a suggestion. We should do this, right? We should have a group of people in every city, in every industry, and in every country, and globally, there'll be a lot of people, call this a digital ethics council. 
Uh, people whose job it is to think about what the consequences of technology are and how we deal with them. I'm not talking about politicians or CEOs here, right? I'm talking about thinkers. I'm talking about people that would be on the level where they can be like, you know, Socrates kind of thing. And this is happening in, in Singapore. It's happening in Denmark. It's happening in different industries. It's happening at Microsoft. It's happening at Google. It's a very, very important discussion. Digital ethics is knowing the difference between what technology enables you to do and what is the right thing to do. Now, <laughs> I grant you that is a difficult discussion about what is the right thing to do, right? I mean, who decides? We'll talk about that in the panel. I'm sure we'll solve it very quickly. Here's a short example. Facebook is the new cigarettes. It's not good for you. It's addictive. You don't know who's trying to convince you to use it or misuse it. The government has to step in and regulate it. And Facebook has proven that to us, even since I said it over nine months ago, over and over and over again, that they need to be regulated because they're not self-regulating. Mark Benioff from Salesforce, right? They need to regulate, be regulated because they're not self-regulating. Think about that for a second. I mean, you're in the banking business, right? He heavily regulated. Do we need this for these platforms? Absolutely. Right? And that discussion is raging because we don't want to end up here, right? You know, we want to end up in a place where AI can help us build value, right? not become the panoptic, the global panopticon. And here's the key question in that. Who is mission control, right? Who controls what happens? Right now, the sector, the top 20 companies in the world are largely uncontrolled. Right? I mean, more, more uncontrolled than any other industry ever was, and this is a very, very big issue. So going forward, you know, this is one of the key issues that we're talking about and which way are we going to go with this. You know, we have sort of the externalities of climate change, right? and then we have the second pollution, which is digital. I call this a digital pollution. You know, it's, it's a way of you know, messing up our thinking and thinking about stuff that we should rather do differently. Best example really is Facebook in their efforts of uh, undermining democracy. And it's funny, you can't say that they did it by purpose or that they are criminal. You signed the user agreement, right? but it's unethical. Right? And that is the problem, of course, with technology when we think about what this means and you know, how they are working on keeping us addicted to the feed of technology. Is that unethical? I think it is. Right? I don't know what your view is on this. I'm, I'm certain none of you do any of those things anyway. So AI, right? same topic. In principle, it's a great idea. I call this intelligent assistance, IA. That's what, you know, in banking, financial, that's 98% of you. They're just fancy software, right? These machines are not thinking. They're not learning like we do, right? They think like machines. How does a machine think? Zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, binary. You know, it basically, if this, then that, right? They can learn, yes, but not like us. I mean, a human sees the world like this. A machine sees the world like this, but has no limits on seeing it, right? There's quite a different level of things. And I think in this world, we should be very careful what we wish for. Intelligent assistance, artificial intelligence, yes, but at the end, ASI, artificial general intelligence, AGI, uh, no, 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 that's probably not a good idea. I think we need to really figure out you know, how we're going to discuss what we do here. I think we're going to see a moratorium on this, just like we have on nuclear weapons. And I, that will not be an easy task, just like nuclear weapons. So let me wrap up, and I think we're moving into a world that I call this hell then. Yeah? It could be heaven, it could be hell. Right? And this has nothing to do with technology, or Silicon Valley, or China. Right? It has to do with how we govern technology whether technology is used to dehumanize or to rehumanize. It's not the purpose of technology to decide. Technology is neutral until we use it. Right? It's not good or bad. We make it good or bad. And we have to think about how we govern technology, not just like government, but also in terms of our own use and which way we're going with this. Okay? So this is kind of quite clear. You know, in this world, between the good and the bad of technology, what are you going to do? Say, well, don't touch it? You know? uh, you're going to have to ask a different question. The question is not if we can do something or how we do it or how much money it makes. That question is getting to be an old question. This is the only question. Why? 
What's the purpose? When we have digital money, and we will, why? You know, what's the purpose? And who can we trust? Would you trust a social media company with your money? That social media company? Yeah, nice idea, but you know, I don't have the trust. I don't know about you, but I think this is a very, very big discussion. Right? In this world, everything that we do is moving to the cloud. Everything. Healthcare records, music, films, television, books, banking, insurance, uh, transportation, cloud. Right? If we don't put this in the middle, human purpose, that's not going to be a good future. We have to make sure that the companies that do this adhere to a standard. Right? They actually are doing this in what I call the, the, uh, the three future principles, holistic business models, the circular economy, and humans at the center. I will not do business with any bank that doesn't have those three parameters. And that will be the new normal also in the stock market in the very near future. So I'm going to wrap up saying, uh, as I say in my book, the biggest danger today is not that machines will take over and kill us. There is a danger for that. It's pretty far away. Well, in overall terms, you know, 50 years maybe. Right? That is possible. Today, the biggest problem is that we become like the machines. We look at the customer as if they were an algorithm. We're too lazy to do our own things. Right? We forget who we are. We stop listening. Right? And we basically become technology. So my call to you is to say, let's embrace technology and use it for all the stuff that it's good for, but not become technology. And I think this is also where Europe and the UK has a leg up. So we'll discuss it in the panel. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you.